It's a look at the world of high school action sports photography on this episode of Behind the Shot. Hi, welcome to another episode of Behind the Shot. As always, I'm your host, Steve Brazel. Nice to have you stopping by. Couple of quick house cleaning tips. First of all, we have moved. If you are coming back to the podcast after a slight hiatus, make sure that you're aware of the new website. It's behindtheshot.tv. And if you were already subscribed to the podcast back when I was on This Week in Photo, make sure that you unsubscribe from that feed and resubscribe to the new feed. If you do do a search in your podcast app, your favorite podcast app, you may see the old icon come up first. Make sure you look for the two new ones. There's both an audio and a video feed, and it'll say my name, Steve Brazel, attached to it too. Subscribe to those. The easiest thing, though, is if you go to BehindTheShot.tv, in the right sidebar, you'll find links to subscribe on any service that you want. And as always, if you drop us an iTunes review and rating, it would be very, very much appreciated. For that matter, on any service that you're going to be using. So let's get into today's guest. This has been a long time coming. I've been trying to get this guy on for a while and just, you know, coordinating schedules and that type of thing has been difficult. And finally, we get the chance to sit down with Terry Jack. Terry, how are you, buddy? It's so good to see you. Good. How are you? Thanks for uh, thanks for having me and doing this. It's absolutely my pleasure. A couple of things. First of all, I've been I, I mentioned I've been trying to get you on the show for a while, and that's because we have somebody that we know in common. Uh, your brother, Dustin Jack. He was episode number nine of Behind the Shot with a a great portrait that he did. Actually, kind of I don't know if you'd call it a portrait. You know the shot I'm talking about. It's like three yes. portraits of uh, the famed Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee. And I've known your brother for quite a long time, and he mentioned to me that you did photography. And immediately it kind of struck me as, it's interesting, the two of you brothers both do photography, so I'm curious, who did it first? Oh, for sure he did it first. He, uh, he's he been involved in it for, for many years. Um, I just started out because I have four kids and started out with uh, my son's playing ball and uh, getting tips and stuff from him and and uh, it just kind of progressed, grew and grew. And now uh, now I love it. Now my kids are all grown up and I'm still uh, trying to get out there on Friday nights and do some high school football games. And and uh, hopefully someday when I retire, you know, it'll be it'll be something that I can continue to do in retirement and, and just keep enjoying it. It, it. You know, photography is an interesting thing. I find I find it's kind of like therapy because it gets stuff that's in your head out of your head. I mean, does that make sense? I don't it even totally know if I, I made any sense. No. Yeah, I'm going. Go sorry. ahead. I, no, I, I, uh, I was going to tell you, I was been going through a divorce for a couple of years. And it if I didn't have that outlet, I don't know, you know, where my mind would be or it just uh, it really has helped. It's been therapeutic for me to just get my mind off of things and do something I like to do. Get away. You can think it's kind of like, you know, running by yourself or something. You're just kind of on yeah. your own and you're you're. Um, you're kind of in a different zone and you can still think, but have a good time, get your mind off of it. And, the uh, yeah, the been, running been, analogy yeah. is actually an interesting one. I never made the connection to, but it kind of is that, that same kind of endorphin release. And at the same time, that same kind of moment of calm in your own head. I think that's kind of why we all do photography to a point. Um, your background is interesting. I want to touch on that for a second before we bring up your image. Uh, you are a firefighter paramedic. How long have yes, you been sir. doing that? Uh, about 20 years. And so, yeah. and you still do that now? I do. Yeah. Actually, today I got uh, stuck at work and uh, I had to wrestle things around. I got off for a few hours so we could get this done because we have been going back and forth and uh, did not want to cancel it again today. So I'll go back uh, for the rest or until uh, Friday morning in a couple hours here. So, so explain to me how long you've been doing that and what your role is. Uh, I work for Huntington Beach Fire. We uh, have paramedic engine companies. So I'm one of two paramedics on the fire engine. We you know, run paramedic uh, calls, fires, EMS. Uh, I'm also on the hazmat team. So anything uh, within certain cities, we cover their hazmat uh, responses. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a great job. And uh, Right now, staffing has been kind of tough, so just getting to come home lately has been a little rough. But uh, other than that, uh, I, I wouldn't have picked any other job. I love it. So first of all, again, for your service and what you do as a first responder, 
thank you. Right. It's guys like you that that make us all safe. So I, I really appreciate what you do. Let me start there. Now let's touch on your photography side. Your your website being uh, say your website again. I had it up on the screen a second ago, but what is it? Uh, it's surfcityactionphotos.com. Okay, surfcityactionphotos.com. And you mostly do action sports. You do do some surfing type stuff and things like that. But really kind of your specialty is actually high school action sports, you know, football, baseball, things like that. And we're talking, you know, championship games, CIF championship games. It's it's not just you're shooting for one specific school type thing. But you also do player portraits and team portraits and composites. And you do something that was interesting to me that kind of ties back to the thing with with your brother, Dustin. Dustin is one of those guys that has a really unique photographic voice, right? He takes the time to, to not just take a picture and lightly process it, but to actually make what he sees in his head as a piece of art. And what I find in the high school photography world, and somebody's going to correct me online, I'm sure, but... I find in the high school photography world, and I'm curious if you see this, is most people shooting high school sports, baseball, football, water polo, whatever, they tend to be, they don't want them to be snapshots like a phone, but they still are very, very journalistically real. Yes. You go beyond that. Yes. I I mean, I think think anybody could kind of do the journalistic look, and I kind of like, I guess, my brother, I want... I want to be different somehow. And I found kind of a look that I liked and kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And now I, like, I can't stand to put a gallery out if I don't, if I don't do that to, you know, get the whole gallery in with the processing that I like. So, um, I've just, I guess I've kind of grown doing it. It's kind of like I shoot raw every time I've just always done that. So I don't know any different. So, like uh, Friday night, I shot a game and I, I probably spent 10 hours getting through this whole thing. And it's not it's not uh, it's not really time efficient, but it's just what I want to put out. You know, 10 hours, you're saying with the culling and editing of the entire shoot. Going there, yes. And then, you know, cropping, editing, right. putting my my finished touches on it and then uploading them. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of time. And, I, um, you know, I think. Uh, parents, maybe, maybe uh, they don't really understand what goes into it. So, you know, I, I do obviously do charge for my work, but they don't, they don't understand. I don't think really the work that goes into it sometimes. And uh, which actually to me, that that's an interesting one to me. Cause I, I hear photographers say that a lot and I don't think parents should have to understand because when you make art, if it speaks to them and they want to buy it, then the whole point of it already worked, right? I mean, we we a you got the the green merits, the money, as it were, but your work spoke to somebody, and to me, that's that's kind of the thing. And when we were looking, you and I at, at your portfolio, and trying to pick an image for today, there were a number of them that we kind of went back and forth on because, again, there's some you you've got some, it's high school sports, but it's more like processed art and i think that's a really refreshing in that genre one um i i think a lot of people doing high school sports could could uh, even just moms and dads shooting from the stands you know with with a 70 to 300 variable aperture um could really learn from just take a little time for the images and that brings us to today's image so today's photograph is is a football game um this was based on the notes that I read. It's Edison versus Matter Day. A- am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. So tell me a little bit about this shot. Where were you when you shot this? I was in an end zone, and it was actually a a, a play that kind of ha- had kind of developed, uh, you know, probably forty yards away. This this kid, who by the way, uh, the quarterback and this kid right here just started for USC this week for the first time and made big headlines on the, uh, on the, uh, college sports world. They're both true freshmen and, and both tore it up. So it was kind of fun to see and kind of funny that you picked that image that has this kid, uh, this kid in there, but, um, the play just kind of progressed. And what's funny with this one is as it was getting closer to the end zone, I I was 
turning, panning to get the shot. And I ran out of flexibility to turn. So I just kept my, my finger on the trigger. It kept clicking and just was moving the camera luckily in the same time. I mean, this is almost, I mean, a lucky picture in a way because I could not keep my eye in the viewfinder. I just kind of panned with a 400, you know, you're, you're, you, you, you know, weren't looking as you were clicking cause you couldn't turn your body enough. I, I ran out of room. Yeah. So I just wow. kept clicking as I was turning and uh, I was, I saw him jump, you know, cause I, I took my head off of the viewfinder. I saw him jump. I'm like, Oh, I hope I got that. And I looked in there. I was like, awesome. And the whole series of that, uh, that play is just unreal. That, that feeling of, I need to know, I need to know. Yeah. And, and you yeah. start panning and you see it on the back of the screen. It's like, yes, I got it. Yeah. So for the people that do the audio feed, I'm going to try, I won't do it justice. Just do me a favor, go download the video feed for this show or go to the website behind the shot.tv. And, and there'll be a blog post associated with this that has this image and some information about Terry and where you can find it, but also a, a gallery of other photos. But here's the deal. Um, again, this is Edison Matter Day. Uh, this is a Matter Day football player, I'm guessing by his sleeve. And he's the the ball is fully stretched out in front of him. He's in the air and he's so in the air, he's almost in a prone position. And the angle accentuates his height because you can see depth of field or not, very shallow depth of field or not, you can see the sideline people and he's even with their heads. Yeah. So this guy's, he's up there based on obviously perspective of where you're standing, but you said something that you were panning with him. And so I'm curious, first let's get the technical out of the way and then I'll ask this question. Okay. Um, correct me on anything if I'm wrong, but I looked up the exit data on this and assuming it's correct and you know they aren't always, you, you shoot manual. Yes. It showed that you have center weighting metering, correct? Yes. Okay. Which is interesting because that tells me immediately you're a Nikon shooter. What body was this? Uh, this was a Nikon D4S. And what lens was this? It was a 400 2.8. Okay. And you were shooting it at 2.8? Yes. And Because at high, high school stadiums, the lighting's so bad. You know, it's either you're shooting 2.8 and, you know, high, S, high ISO. So what was your ISO on this? Any idea? I'm guessing it was 5,000. Okay, so you're high, high ISO. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're I'm doing that so that you can get the shutter speed that you had, which was a thousandth of a second. Yes, I try not to go under a thousandth. Um, that's one thing my brother taught me for freeze in action. So I've always tried to stay within 1,000. Uh, and um, I think the ISO was that high because I'd rather shoot it like F4 to get a little more, um, you know, have a little more room there. But it gets so dark in those fields that, I don't really like to go above uh, ISO 5000 either with, with that that camera. I mean, ISO 6400, you can still get away with and put out good images, but uh, I, I don't know. I, those are the parameters I try and stick with. Right. It makes sense. And it's funny because the way I started photography completely was high school football. My son was in marching band and I walked into a camera store and said, I want to take pictures of my kid in marching band on a high school football field. And I bought at the time an original Canon XTI and they held up two, I've told this story on various podcasts before, but they held up two lenses. And one of them was a 70 to 200 2.8. And one of them was a 70 to 300, 3.5 to 5.6. And the guy goes, you want the, you want the 200 2.8? And I looked at him. <laughs> I feel so stupid when I tell the story, but it's true. And, and it's the reason I love high school football stuff like this. I looked at him and I said, A, the camera is black and that lens is white. <laughs> And B, 300 is more than 200. So I bought the variable aperture 70 to 300. And it was the biggest mistake I've ever made ph photographically in my life. And it's the reason I learned photography, though, because people don't realize how dark a high school football field is. I mean, it's insanely dark. And I'm in the stands and I'd be perfect f exposure at 70. And I'd zoom to 300 to get my kid and I'd be underexposed. Yeah. Uh, because it's just, you know, that that difficult to get. I made the comment that because you mentioned center weighted metering that you were on on a Nikon camera. And so let me just clarify, because somebody's going to say, hey, Canon has center weighting. Yes, but there is a difference. A Nikon D4S, wherever your center weighting meter, when you have center weighted metering, if you move your focus point off center, 
right? Your metering follows your focus point. The only Canon camera as of recording of this that does that is the 1DX series. The 5D4 does not. If you move your focus point all the way up to an upper right or an upper left corner, your center weighted, your center weighted metering is still off the center focus point. So like for me, for concert photography, that kills me because I'm on a lit up face, but the center weighting is on a black monitor at the bottom of the stage. Um, so being a Nikon shooter, that's actually a very useful tool for you. So let's, let's talk high school football shooting here for a second. Okay. You're on the sidelines and you mentioned that for this particular image, you were panning. So explain to me your camera setup. You're on a monopod with that lens, I'm assuming. I mean, pan panning might be the wrong way to explain it because I guess a lot of people assume panning is you're shooting with, uh, you know, a low shutter speed and you're going the same speed as the player. I just, I more meant that I'm just trying, I, I couldn't see him. So I was just trying to aim the camera right in time with him. So, okay. um, so I don't think panning is. You're more just, right. you're not panning, trying to focus with him. You're just trying to keep him in the center of the lens and trigger. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes that makes sense. But but here's the deal. There's a lot happening on a football field, right? You've got boosters on the side, coaches. I was always surprised at how many coaches there are in high school football. That's brutal. Yeah. I mean, seriously, it's insane. Um, you've got players. You've got guys warming up to kick. When you're, you know, like you can see in this one, the depth of field at the, at the back, the 2.8 really helped you separate him from that background here. But when you're on the side and there's that much, you know, for lack of a better phrase, crap happening around, what are you thinking to get subject separation? Uh, I mean, you, it, it's it's almost like you're you're a running back. You know, you're looking for holes. <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to position yourself where you can get a hole to get through people because there's refs running by you, other players. Um, you know, you, the, on the Nikon, you can set your camera up where it has a little bit of delay. So if, if I'm fixed on, on him and he runs by, he runs in back of another player, it's going to stay, the focus is going to stay right. on him and not immediately go to. So you're to tweaking. So, so you are using in Canon world, it's AI servo uh, focus tracking. What do you call it on a Nikon? But you, I, I, you're I'm using sure. a focus tracking though. Yes. And you're and it's tweaking it set. a couple seconds. Yes. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Are you using a single point autofocus or, or are you using a zone autofocus or? I use zone. It's called 3D tracking. It'll help me with, with tracking the player. That might have been what saved me a little bit on this too. Is it, uh, you know, as I'm going, it's, it's tracking him, the, the focus point. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm kind. I am kind of an amateur on some of this stuff, so I don't know terminology on everything. I've, I'm still learning myself. And um, one of the things I did with with this is there's a guy named Dave Black who's done Sports Illustrated. He's a right. big sports photographer, and he's got some uh, blogs and stuff out. And I kind of looked at his settings because he's put out some unbelievable work. So when I when I got the camera, I wasn't. There's so many settings on there, oh, and trying to figure yeah. out what is what. So. I kind of just went with his algorithm and I tried to set my camera up with uh, kind of what he used. And, you know, if uh, he's got a few classes on Kelby that I subscribe to, I'll watch that. And I'll just try and get kind of an idea of, of his game plan, just like you're asking me. That's it's just it's a continuing learning process. And, uh, you know, I've gone to uh, like a sports shooter academy and they just teach you more about being aware of your background, you know, staying low and and it's taught me to, to try different lenses and just get, get, just get different things. Cause you know, it's when you're shooting a game, sometimes it feels like you're, you're shooting the same thing every time. And, uh, it's nice to just get different lenses, different focuses, different, you know, heights, uh, different plates, shoot from different up in the stands low. Um, I think just getting a different pictures. Yeah. I could try and, Try and capture something that the the normal, you know, yeah. sideline shooter isn't capture, ca you know, capturing. I'm curious though because with with high school football, you know, stuff happens where it happens, right? And quite often it's in more than one place because you've got, you know, let's let he draws back, he lets a bomb fly. 
Okay, now you've got a choice because he's about to be sacked by three guys. That's an awesome photo, right? Yep. Then you've got the guy in the air. That's an awesome photo. So you as a high school sports shooter, what are you looking for to decide which of those completely opposite area images are you most likely going to try going for? Is it almost always going to be this? I think it depends on the play. Like I, I like... I like on these kind of plays too when when I'm in the end zone and they're 40, 50 yards back. And I like seeing all the linemen, you know, all the blocks going on and you see kind of the whole play in the picture. I so like you those position two. yourself with composition in mind then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then if in this, if <laughs> if obviously I was in this play, so they're the offense is facing me. If I was on the other end zone, that's more of the shots that I would wait for and try and get the sack or, you know, the players I'm on the other side more behind the quarterback trying okay. to get those plays because if they throw a bomb there's there's no sense of me trying to right. to, to get that from the, from that angle or that vantage point well and and see that to me is a key because so many people composition to them is what they see through the lens and it is but it starts before then with thinking do i want you know what do i want behind him do i want you know, to make sure I can see the sideline or do I want to get low and have this guy against the stands and the lights? So the composition starts before you ever look, you know, in the viewfinder, as it were. Um, and and you're shooting with a 402.8 prime lens. That's got to affect, I'm assuming, you know, how you're framing and, and your composition. When it comes to post, I started with talking about the fact that you, like your, like your brother, you, you have a vision and you execute on that vision. You're not doing photojournalistic work, usually. Some of your stuff is. Some of your surfing stuff is. Um, you got a great one of a surfer kind of up on a, on a way. I think it's in the gallery. I don't know. Um, against a pier, and it's just, I ah, love it. Uh, but anyway, um, what is your usual workflow? You come back. What do you, what do, you do to cull and edit? Uh, usually, you know, I'll... I'll put them all in the light room and then I'll, I'll start trying to kind of because a football game, especially right now you're starting, you know, in the early evening. So the light changes through the whole game. So I try and kind of batch roughly the, the, uh, the lighting, get all that st set up on the different batches. So like up until dusk, I'll, I'll kind of do those. And then I'll once night hits or after halftime, I'll, I'll kind of get them all the same because the lighting really doesn't change at that point. Um, and I, I kind of do a rough edit in Lightroom and then um, I'll take them into bridge and I'll usually run an action uh, of a look that I like and I'll run every image through that. And then um, and then that's I'll, like that's like a base uh, action to get to a certain place. Yeah, it's kind of after after I process them in Lightroom, then I'll run them through that action and it kind of puts more of a that grungy little look on there okay. and then um i obviously have to crop them all too so so like i think the last uh game that i did i had 800 images that i went through and that's one that's one problem that i have is i have to start doing 150 200 images for a game and not what do you do you call but, in lightroom uh what, what so so when you bring in 800 images how do you whittle that down to 50 or you do that in lightroom yeah, I'll go through it. I'll just you okay. Know, I got a tip for you then. I get to pass okay. this one on. This was originally brought up to me by uh, a friend of mine in San Diego, a concert shooter who knows knows Dustin as well, uh, Alan Hess, and then another friend of mine, Troy Miller, showed me the software once, and I I spent the hundred and fifty bucks on it, and I've never looked back. Photo Mechanic, Lightroom killed me with next image loading. Lo is it sharp? Yeah. Oh, there it is. It just came in, right? Uh, even with preview sometimes, and I'm on a last year's top of the line, maxed out iMac, and I still get delay on loading. Uh, photo mechanic, next, next, one star, next, next, instantaneously. I, I know, I, I have used photo mechanic, and I've used it more for like, if I'm shooting for like, someone who needs a, the photos up, like for a college game or something, right. they need them up right now. Um, but that program still intimidates me. So that that's like, uh, I need to work with that. I know it's a better program for that kind of thing, getting through those, but uh, I still kind of struggle with it. And uh, I need to, I, I need to just take the time and learn it for sure. So what you also do, I mentioned, you know, student portraits and team portraits and you use backgrounds for those sometimes. Mm -hmm. Where do your backgrounds come from? Do you shoot your own? Do you buy them? Uh, I shoot, shoot my own. Sometimes I'll, I'll 
buy one, you know, I mean, and you'll be able to tell those if, if I'm shooting them, it'll be, um, you'll be able to tell because it's, uh, it's a pier or it's a, right. it's just a wall. It's a texture. It's, if it's something funky, like a bunch of blocks stacked on top of each other or you right. know something, yeah, then, then I'll, I'm usually, I'll buy those, but, uh, I don't, I try not to use those too much, but like, I like tunnels and stuff too, putting them in tunnels. Yeah, you've got, I, I've seen some of those. Those are nice. What is your basic, if you were to just summarize in a sentence, your approach to post-production and the, and the, the, the look that you tend to get, what is, what is, what is the Terry Jack post-production outlook? Kind of start to finish. Uh, kind of the same thing I told you. I'll go into Lightroom. No, all more all. not start to finish. More what's your goal? I mean, what do you, when you post-process an image and you look at an image, one single image for the first time and you're going to post-process it, what are you thinking? I, I want to make them look like a, a big leaguer, an NFL player, a, a pro player, Um I want I want to make the school look good because I, I think a lot of times making the school look good, it does help them eventually with their recruiting. Right. And like I did a lot of work for hunting and baseball and put a lot of good stuff out there. And it I, I think that helps schools. So I guess brand help trying to help brand the school too is you you just said a school and, and you you glitched a little bit, internet being the internet, right? What school was it you said you were doing a lot of work for? Uh, Huntington Beach High School. Huntington Beach High School. Okay. Southern California. Um, So if you were to give somebody, A, a tip on how to get started in shooting high school action sports, and B, the best tip on getting good pictures, what would those two things be? Uh, I I think learning. I mean, you have to, and and I was pretty much self-taught. I mean, my brother did teach me a lot of, a lot of things, but you have to, I don't have time to go to school, so I have to kind of do internet learning. You know, I, I, I'll do. Kel- you mentioned Kelby, which is, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll spend a lot of time doing that, and if I don't know something, then that's that's how I'm going to learn it. And you know, sometimes my brother doesn't know it either. I'll ask him, or um, I still think he holds secrets from me. He, he says no, I tell you everything. But <laughs> sorry, he's so full of it. Yeah, he's full of it. So, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because to me, like you know, like. Uh, some of the stuff with concert photography, I see the same. I see the same thing with high school football. You have lights. I mean, there's so right. many cool things you could do with it. But yeah, he's not. He's he no. says he does. He's holding he's out. Not. Yeah, he's totally. holding out. He's doing it to me too. Um, so <laughs> I don't think I answered your question. Yeah. So uh, so give me give me those answers. Your your tip for people getting started and your tip for uh, getting better shots. I I think uh, getting better shots, putting yourself in good positions. Um, I think equipment does matter. I mean, I hear a lot of times that it doesn't. You can obviously start out uh, with, with right. anything, but like the the night football, the D four D four S is made for night sports action photography. I mean, it's low light. You just can't you can't do right. that if you don't have that equipment, and it, it's not cheap. So, um, like I did, I started with a I think a D two hundred that my brother advised me to buy. So I started with that and. Then I wasn't getting anything at night. So I just kind of progressed. And, and uh, I, I think that's a good way to go because who knows if you're going to like it. Don't start out buying, spending 15 grand on equipment when you don't even know. Uh, you right. know, lear, learn, the, learn what you're doing and, and, and the kind of looks you want. And then um, as you go, just make it, make it a time thing where you, you spend some time in it and um, buy stuff as you need it. Well, um, and... And uh, again, people need to see some of your your stuff because not only the shot that we talked about today, but some of the other stuff, your surfing stuff, your baseball stuff. You've got one really cool, really neat effect of a, of a football player running almost with a, a, a highly accentuated motion blur that I really like. You know the shot I'm talking about, I'm sure. Um, but there is a small gallery of Terry's images in the blog post associated with this at behindtheshot.tv. And then Terry, if people want to find you uh, what's your website again? Uh, surfcityactionphotos.com. Okay. And, and, uh, and I know that you're on Instagram, which is Terry, Terry underscore under- Jack's underscore photos. Yes. And J-C-K, what about Jack? Okay. And what about, uh, Twitter? Uh, Twitter is at Terrence Jack. At Terrence Jack. Okay. So go look him up. Give him some love. Do me a favor. Drop him a comment. If you watch this, go follow him on all of those services. And Terry, I'm so glad I finally got you on here. One of these days, I'm going to come out 
LA bound. And uh, we need to get together with you and Dustin and have ourselves a beer and have some fun, man. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, believe me. I'm so glad I got you on again. That's it for this episode of Behind the Shot. As always, I'm your host, Steve Brezel. You can find me in all the normal places. Of course, I've got, you know, the uh, the Facebook page, which is Steve Brazel Photography. Instagram and Twitter are exactly the same. It's Steve Brazel. It's like the country Brazil, but two L's. And then, of course, my website, you can find me at stevebrazel.com for my portfolio. But the podcast is BehindTheShot.tv. I'd like to ask that you again, subscribe. We've got a YouTube channel you can look up. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Drop us a review where you can. And to everybody, thanks for all the support as I've gone out on my own. I really appreciate it. That does it for this episode of Behind the Shot. (laughs) 